coming up on Harvard Chan this week in health, setting the record straight on dietary fats and heart health. So when they say that saturated fat does not affect health, they mean yes, and they're comparing bad against bad. So you have to look at what one nutrient or one food is substituted with. I mean, what's the point of talking about, for example, red meat if you can't compare it to something else? If you're going to compare it to eggs and ice cream, well, maybe, you know, red meat will come out fairly good. In this week's episode, why unsaturated fats are your best choice for heart health. We'll speak with one of the authors of a new American Heart Association advisory about the state of the science on dietary fats and some simple swaps you can make to include more healthy fats in your diet. Hello and welcome to Harvard Chan This Week in Health. It's Tuesday, July 11th, 2017. I'm Noah Levitt. Amy Montemuro is off. This week we're talking all about dietary fats, specifically unsaturated versus saturated fats. Foods high in saturated fats are things like red meat, butter, or cheese. Unsaturated fats are broken down into two categories, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated, and are found in vegetable oils, nuts, seeds, and fish. Coming up in a few minutes, you'll be hearing from Frank Sachs, professor of cardiovascular disease prevention here at the Harvard Chan School, and one of the authors of a new American Heart Association advisory, which urges people to swap out saturated fats, for unsaturated fats. The AHA says doing so can lower a person's heart disease risk as much as cholesterol-lowering statin drugs. Researchers, including Sachs, analyze hundreds of studies published since the 1950s, and they say that overwhelming evidence shows that saturated fats should be consumed in limited quantities. The advisory comes amid conflicting research and media reports about the health effects of saturated fats. So we asked Sachs to explain the science why we are seeing these conflicting reports, and what you can do to add more healthy, unsaturated fats into your diet. I started our conversation by asking Sachs why the AHA felt the need to issue this advisory now. Well, the American Heart Association leadership about uh, two to three years ago decided that uh, a major reevaluation of the dietary fats that we eat is warranted in terms of relation to heart disease. One reason for the Heart Association's decision on that is that um, for a a few years, there have been contrarian articles published either in the medical literature or by writers um, who have prominently trumpeted results that, that that dietary fat and health had to be revised. Uh, that, in fact, it's not really so pertinent to health what kind of fats or how much fats we eat. And so I know the panel reviewed decades of scientific evidence. So what does the science show us about the effects of saturated fats versus unsaturated fats? What we found is that very, very clearly saturated fat caused uh, atherosclerosis, which is plaque, cholesterol-rich plaque in the arteries of the heart, or leading up to the brain, and also heart attacks and strokes, in comparison to unsaturated fats. And among the unsaturated fats, the polyunsaturated fats were more protective than the monounsaturated fats. So our conclusion was reduce saturated fat and replace it with unsaturated fats, preferably uh, polyunsaturated fats. And so you touched on this a second ago, but If the scientific evidence on the harmful effects of saturated fat, it's so overwhelming. So why have there been these studies that have found no links between saturated fats and heart health? Well, there have been a few of these studies. And the the studies uh, used essentially obsolete methodology uh, in their meta-analysis. So what meta-analysis does is it combines all available studies and um, and, uh, analyzes all the results together. And what, they've, what some of them reported is that there was no relation between saturated fat and heart disease. But that's only because people who eat low amounts of saturated fat in our populations eat a lot of junk food carbohydrate, including added sugars, uh, desserts, white bread, and that, that, that's no good. So when they say that saturated fat uh, does not affect health, they mean yes, and they're comparing bad against bad. Now, if saturated fat instead is compared to polyunsaturated or monounsaturated fat, there's most definitely harm in saturated fat. And finally, if saturated fat is compared to good carbohydrate-containing foods like whole grains, then you see 
uh, an advantage to reducing saturated fat. Now, I think that some of the, the uh, authors of these papers were just simply unaware of um, contemporary methodology in nutritional epidemiology, which Walter Willett and his colleagues developed when they recognized that when you're looking in observational epidemiology, you have to look at, 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 at what one nutrient or one food is substituted with. I mean, what's the point of talking about, for example, red meat uh, if you can't compare it to something else? If you're going to compare it to to eggs and ice cream, well, maybe the red, you know, red meat will come out fairly good, and that's actually what happened uh, some years ago in some epidemiological study. And so it's, I mean, the wisdom now is that it's fats are good. You just have to be careful about which fats you're choosing. Yeah, well, it's a very important point. I mean, f dietary fat is good, absolutely, as long as it is unsaturated fat, and it's if if it, if the dietary fat contains saturated fat. Uh, or is high in saturated fat, it's, it contributes to heart disease. For people who maybe hear these terms but don't know, I mean, what are some prominent examples of saturated fat and then unsaturated fat? Okay, well, one way to differentiate saturated from unsaturated is, to, is that saturated fat is solid at room temperature. Unsaturated fat is liquid at room temperature. So if you want some examples, solid at room temperature, of course, you could think of butter, uh, lard, beef tallow, pork fat, Coconut fat, um, palm kernel or palm, palm oil is, is mostly solid. And liquid oils would be corn oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, sunflower, safflower oil, olive oil, of course. And so you, you talked about coconut fat, coconut oil. I mean, there were a lot of headlines specifically focusing on coconut oil. Why do you think that has become such kind of a lightning rod food? Well, there's been tremendous hype about coconut oil being uh, purportedly being healthy, um, and there really is no basis in science for that. And what we know is that coconut oil is mostly saturated fat. It raises LDL cholesterol, which is the which is the cholesterol that directly causes heart disease, um, just as much as butter does or other uh, high saturated fat foods. So there's nothing really special about saturated fat-rich coconut oil beyond its saturated fat. Now, there have been speculations that there's some other ingredients in coconut oil that may be protective, but those are not yet at least backed up by any credible scientific evidence yet. There are things that we know about coconut oil, the saturated fat content, the increase in L LDL cholesterol, which is bad, and then there's, specul then there's speculation uh, maybe based on a small number of studies in animals or cells or, that, or whatnot um, that need to be followed up, that are not, not established fact that we can use in, in human clinical uh, practice or guidelines. So I, I think when it comes to, and we've touched on this, but when it comes to dietary fats, there can be a lot of conflicting information in the media. I mean, there's always headlines, butter is back, butter is not back. I mean, so what would your advice be to consumers, people at home, as they are attempting to make healthy choices? What things should they keep in mind? Well, I think, first of all, pe pe people should look at established health guidelines produced by, by organizations like the American Heart Association uh, or the National Institutes of Health, uh, or say for diabetes, the American Diabetes Association, uh, and use those as guides because they are very, very carefully uh, uh, evaluated, written, framed, vetted in, in several level, levels of peer review, especially something like the Dietary Fats Advisory. And um, th th those are guidelines that people should, should look at. What they should not do is sort of look at the latest, the latest story on, uh, in the media because the media approaches science and health findings totally inimically to inform consumers in public health. And what I mean is that the model for the media is to trumpet the latest study. And if the latest study is different from conventional knowledge, they will, they will trumpet it even more. Well, that's not right. I mean, there is context. And the media, if they're, if they're going to do a decent job of it, they're going to study the context and not just listen to the authors of some Pay, uh, research result that may not be done well or may be contrarian for a, for a methodological reason, 
They need to look at the context. They can do it. They are good investigational reporters, and if they use that skill in investigational journalism onto the onto food guidelines and health guidelines, then that would serve the public much better than the current situation. So if I'm a person who is looking to get more unsaturated fats in my diet, what are some easy ways to start doing that? What are some maybe healthy swaps people can make? Well, for example, I mean, I, I um, cook with corn oil because it's very high in polyunsaturated fats. So I, I use that for sauteing. Um, and on the salads, I like the taste of extra virgin olive oil, so I have my favorites, and I use that. And I use that for, for example, people can deep fry deep fried foods. They're they're fine. There's nothing wrong with deep fried foods as long as they're deep fried in a healthy unsaturated oil. Sunflower, sun, safflower, oil, canola oil, corn oil. They are all just fine for deep frying, and they will add to the healthfulness of of what you're deep frying. For example, like like fish, deep fried fish. Nothing the matter with that. In fact, it's very good if uh, the oil is is unsaturated. So, like donuts, not still not healthy. But t- if you take something healthy and put it in unsaturated oil, it's not going to make it suddenly worse for you. Well, yeah. I mean, for example, take eggs. If you fry eggs in corn oil, for example, the net healthfulness of the eggs will be uh, enhanced. But if you fry it in butter or bacon grease or something like that, well, it's, it's you're going to create a very unhealthful breakfast. One of the key messages from the advisory was this idea that replacing saturated fat with healthier fats in the diet can lower heart disease risk as much as cholesterol-lowering statin drugs. So how do making di- how do making these dietary changes fit into an overall heart disease prevention strategy? What we uh, uh, concluded in this advisory is that, is that the cornerstone for healthy eating is a healthy dietary pattern, healthy dietary pattern. For example, like the DASH diet, Mediterranean diet, vegetarian diet, um, those are healthful dietary patterns. Now, we say within the healthy dietary pattern, the oils should be unsaturated rather than saturated, and food should be chosen so that, so that the fats that they contain in them will be unsaturated, like nuts, for example. That was our interview with Frank Sachs about a new American Heart Association advisory on unsaturated fats. And we know that making healthy choices when it comes to fat can sometimes be confusing. So we'll be putting several resources up on our website, hsph.me slash thisweekinhealth. We'll have definition of the different kinds of fat and examples of foods to eat more of and ones to try and limit. That's all for this week's episode, and a reminder that you can subscribe to listen to us on iTunes or Stitcher, or stream episodes at soundcloud.com slash Harvard Public Health. <laughs>